And now if it's the same account, it is the same account. It's 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 literally just not it's just not working. It appears that the winds of change are blowing, guys. On my YouTube channel over the last six or so months, I've highlighted, investigated, and discussed the rotten state of cryptocurrency and NFTs. And in almost all cases, there have been zero repercussions. It was beginning to make me jaded about the current state of affairs and the lack Wait of consequences for stealing millions of dollars. But today, Today that comes to an end and this is massive. As of March 24th, 2022, the United States Department of Justice have stepped in and charged two defendants in a fraud and money laundering scheme. To break it down to its very core, they found two anonymous scammers who thought they too could get away with using the blockchain to cheat gullible investors. And let's be real, why would these people not think they could get away with it? There are prominent figures in sports, there's actors, social media influencers, adult stars, and many more individuals with millions, hundreds of millions of followers that have been involved in these scams, either by promotion or in some cases, direct ownership with absolutely zero consequence. Millions of people see them scam their well, audience wait a minute. and nobody does anything. So this duo likely thought, why not us too? We're nobodies. Nobody even knows who we are. Nobody's watching. Why can't we too get away with stealing millions of dollars? And they started out with a relatively small NFT scheme that raised 1.1 million in January and thought, wow, that was easy. Let's go again. However, the US federal government was watching and during the second scam attempt, they were cut short, thankfully. And this is frankly huge. It's massive what I do for what happens in the blockchain space. And it illustrates that most things highlighted on this channel and other channels like CoffeeZilla are in with a real shot of facing the music. These people have operated like it was the Wild West for too long. And this is proof that people are getting caught with their hand in the cookie jar when they thought nobody was watching. In Huh. United States of America versus Jesus. It's crazy though, but guess, aren't these only the creators or people who took in money to promote case, them or not? Both defendants were 20 years old and arrested in Los Angeles, California. These arrests came after an in-depth investigation by multiple branches of the federal government. This includes the Department of Homeland Security, the New York Office of the U.S. Postal Inspection Service, the Internal Revenue Service Criminal Investigators, and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. The investigation began in January of 2022, which is right when this scam actually occurred, and they were alerted to this from, quote, reports from purchasers of Frosty's utility NFTs that they had been defrauded in what is colloquially referred to as a rug pull. This is oh, incredibly wow. important information. It means that reporting these scams, these schemes to to the proper authorities is not in fact a waste of your time and it is resulting in real investigations and arrests. This completely vindicates the importance of spreading the awareness about this topic. The key takeaway here yeah, that is it, guys, guys. aren't most NFTs rug pulls though? If you are rugged, if you suspect fraud, report it, get the word out, send it to YouTubers, and there are going to be consequences. The IRS criminal investigation special agent in charge said this, and I quote, NFTs represent a new era for financial investment, but the same rules apply to an investment in an NFT or a real estate development. You cannot oh, solicit wow. funds for a business opportunity, abandon that business, and abscond with money investors provided you. Our team here at IRSCI and our partners at Homeland Security closely track cryptocurrency transactions in an effort to uncover alleged scams like this one. This, this has been my take since day one. People, people act like, oh, dude, it's the Wild West, dude, we did it, dude, we can do the same thing people do in real, in, in, in real investment that are illegal and put in crypto and it can't be tracked to us, dude, because, dude, it's not regulated, law, dude, the same concepts apply, of course it does, what, like, what? The wording is very clear, of course it applies. you sell somebody something with the promise you will deliver on future benefits or development. Guys, yeah, people say, oh, dude, I have interest in the space, I have interest in the whatever, no, dude, you have interest because the, the same concepts are are regulated and you better not they be lying, are dude or at least make a believable attempt at delivering on your promises or this could be you facing up to 40 years in prison a roadmap is a promise you hear that influences what you are doing is fraud and the blockchain does not lie they will find you now they specify in the doj document that the roadmap made promises of additional benefits accompanying the purchase of these frosties nfts including giveaways early access to a metaverse game and exclusive mint passes to upcoming frosty seasons however on january 9th just two days after the mint date of the frosties nfts the defendants initiated the rug pull 
As you can see from the Ether scan on screen, the Frosties contract sent out 358 Ether to an alternative cryptocurrency wallet. The value of 358 Ether at that time was $1,127,997. This is the first charge being wire fraud. Wire fraud, of course, entails financial fraud that uses telecommunications or information technology. Essentially, if you use technology to commit the fraud, you can expect wire fraud to be the charge. As for the second right. charge, which is conspiracy Samsung to commit money laundering, to I present to you like Tornado.cash. Tornado Cash is a decentralized app that allows for users to send eth into what many call a money tumbler they give you back a receipt and then you wait as more people send in ethereum yours will get jumbled in with the other transactions and eventually you can withdraw it on the other side with a different wallet with zero blockchain transactions linking the original transfer into tornado cash to your new clean wallet this is an app that facilitates money laundering plain and simple and in my research into it as well as the usage of it by people in the blockchain space it appears to have almost zero practical use beyond sketchy people clean wait that's fucking busted what that's their money so busted from illegal activities the only other reason to use it would be anonymity hiding from the ever-present blockchain transaction records that show your footprint whenever you do anything but almost every single time i see this mentioned on any wallet i'm investigating it is associated with a rug pull or a fraud in some way people wait can they can the department of whatever uh, you use this as evidence that you that you intentionally uh i think tornado cash is the end of the line but as we're going to go over in the rest of this video you are not not safe as really you you were. as That's for the case of the frosty's defendants they thought just that and on january 11th they sent 345 ethereum to be cleaned they likely then celebrated their perfect heist the ingenuity of it pretending to make something and then just taking everybody's money amazing they of course couldn't stop there so the second scam started to take shape in the form of what they called embers Embers was set to launch on March 26th, 2022, and according to the DOJ, was- Oh my god, 50 get of the Red Cross? Dude, guys, this is why I have so much respect for the space, the environment, the, the, the scope, the UFO. The, this is why I have so much respect time. for the, of course, the globe, the circle, the instead, fucking the they are oval. the long dick of the law. So how exactly did they get caught and how nailed are these guys? Well, according to the official complaint document, they had grand jury subpoenas, for a lot of large companies. Discord, the popular social media app, which is used in almost every it's single flat. cryptocurrency scam Shut as up, a meeting bitch. place of the community. Coinbase, which is the most popular on and off ramp of cryptocurrency into traditional currencies and Charter Communication, which is a telecommunications company, the internet that the defendants used when committing the alleged fraud. Now the task force used Discord records to capture the IP address of defendant one known as Frosty to multiple other Discord accounts. They then tracked back through those Discord accounts and found that on October 17th, 2021, one of the IP addresses associated Jesus. had accessed a Coinbase account, which gave them the possible identity of the first defendant. Then again on December 17th, 2021. Guys, guys, I don't want, I, I want to say you should do this, but what if they had a VPNs and they, they took the right uh, path to do this? Wouldn't they, gotten, they would have gotten away with this? Another IP address associated with one of Frosty's accounts accessed the same Coinbase account, which confirmed they had the right person. Defendant 2 was much easier to catch. With the Discord subpoena, they simply checked his Discord account details which were registered using his real phone number and real email address that tracked back to his real identity. They then, of course, cross -re Guys, I'm pretty sure that um, that that VPNs cooperate with the authorities, right? And they, if they get if they get subpoenaed for some some records, they they do give them over, correct? Most of them, anyway. Reference this with their Coinbase subpoena information, which gave them his photo ID and all relevant information. So immediately they had the identities of both defendants. Not Between them, December 29th, 2021 and January 19th, 2022, the IP addresses associated with defendant one was used to access social media platforms, including Discord and Twitter over 130 times. This access was to promote the Frosty's NFT sale. After discovering the defendant's identities, they moved on to linking them to the scam. They then used further grand jury subpoenas for domain hosting website GoDaddy, Citibank, PayPal, Coinbase, and of course, physical surveillance to link defendant one and defendant two to the actual timeline. Jesus, they got absolutely bombed. 7, 2021, defendant one used a Citibank credit card to purchase goods to the tune of $1,424 
and 75 cents on popular freelancer website Fiverr with a transaction notation regarding the design of a website and landing page. Within two days on September 9th, 2021, the Frosty's website domain was registered with GoDaddy and coincidentally on that same day, the Citibank subpoena shows a purchase of $54.98 to GoDaddy from Defendant One's credit card. Defendant One also used his own phone number and home address which is registered to his parents' house when registering this domain for Frosties. These same details are also listed on his Coinbase ah. account. From Defendant One's Citibank records, he was making regular payments to a property management company from August 2021, which listed a unit number notation. They then went to this location and observed a man appearing to match the photograph identification of Defendant One entering and exiting the building they had him. They then attained grand jury subpoenas for MetaMask and OpenSea, as well as previous information related material from Citibank and Coinbase, as well as of course reviewing the transaction history that is publicly available on the Ethereum blockchain and continue to build evidence. On December 31st, 2021, Defendant One purchased a $9.99 subscription to VPN service TunnelBear. However, since he used his original IP to do many things, including purchase the actual VPN subscription, they then could trace oh his IP God. ranges when using TunnelBear to the Frosty social media account and website. In May 2021, the Frosty's OpenSea account was created again by Defendant One. At this stage, they have him tied to creation in every aspect of the Frosty's NFT fraud. The creation of the site, the creation of the wallet address used to perpetuate the scam, the purchase of the domain name, physical surveillance at a registered location, and then they have evidence of the actual fraud happening. The transaction of ETH to Tornado Cash was of course when they tried to launder the money, and they could then track Defendant 1 and Defendant 2 on the other side of the washing attempt. All they had to do was wait for them to pull out the money, and they would see them doing that based on knowing their location and their identities. Yeah, I think this is good because I, I, if people say, oh, it's only $1 million, right? Only $1 million compared to the millions and millions and hundreds of millions like that are getting scammed with rug pulls. But, but I think this creates a precedent like to, even to, from other people to, to not do. Yeah, yes, I said only. Guys, guys, look how much research that, 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 that the authorities did and how much staff they had on this. This is, this is an incredible amount of work and paperwork and 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 and, and staff and paid time. This is incredible. This is an, an ins a, yeah and attorneys. This is a crazy amount of time and, and resources. But it creates a precedent for uh, for other people and it scares away people from doing it, right? And overall, it, it says, hey, yo guys, if you do this, you're gonna get smoked. In or terms you can't of tracking them. the funds as they went into and as they left Tornado Cash, they tracked the IP address of two wallets who received the stolen funds from the Frosty's main account as well as the IP addresses used to send the stolen funds to Tornado Cash, and these corresponded with the tracking of Defendant 2. Defendant 2 then waited for four days until January 15th, 2022, and again used IP addresses associated with himself to withdraw the Ethereum from Tornado Cash, and again a month later on February 15th. They only took out approximately 9.5 Ethereum, which was deposited into a Coinbase account associated with Defendant 1, and 12.16 Ethereum into a Coinbase wallet hey, associated yo, what up, with man? Defendant How you been, man? Pretty good, how about you? Yo, good, good, dude, I missed you, dude. Oh, man, it's been a while, I've seen you. Okay, here, good, buddy. good, good. Yeah, we're here. Um, water, what's up? I put a water there for you. Uh, where? Oh, over here, here's your water, man. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Delivery, delivery. Mr. Mayor, okay, guys, guys, chat, guys, guys, we'll, guys, uh, we'll finish this later. Okay, uh, we'll man begin with the letter, uh, letter chat, guys. Uh, first, I gotta get a haircut, okay? Uh, I'm um, fucking trespassing, uh, not in on you. What do call these yeah, shitty but, selectors but, like Cass and Beaker uh, still? The hair has gone is out of control, boys. It's gone out of control. And, um... Right. Yeah, I'm gonna explain... Uh, basically, the hair has gone so long yeah, that, um... Yeah, what are we up to, dude? What are we gonna do? Uh, just cut it, I think. Just okay. Give it a, give it a cut. Okay. Um... Yes, uh, so no, no color today is what I heard. No, so. no. Um, you didn't bring color, did you? I, I, I would have, but I got no, 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 no. I didn't want it to either. Oh, okay. Either. 